Okay, fellas, we just went out and looked at the car you guys made history with 50 years ago. Number one, who talked who into being teammates? Did you talk him into being your teammate? I think that was a decision from Ford, wasn't it? I think it was, yeah. yeah. Because I just wanted to thank Andy and that. And, you know, I was supposed to go over in 66, mm -hmm. and I got burnt, remember, at Milwaukee. And Ford that weekend lost about four or five of their drivers. So then they asked me in 67. So I think Ford was the one paired us up. But you hate foreign food. You're what right. did you eat over there? Well, I damn sure didn't gain no weight. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what about the test program? Did, was, did you guys get to test for a week, two days, 30 minutes? Uh, 15. 15 minutes. Did yeah. you have a test, a, a serious test program? No. 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 They, Ford had a very serious program with a lot of people involved, but uh, we were both racing elsewhere, I yeah. think. Well, but you, the thing that's interesting is uh, people always talk to you and Parnelli, oh, it's too bad you guys never got to win Formula One. But you had a chance. You always told me, I don't want to go over there and race. Well, that's exactly right. And uh, I just didn't care about it. So what made you want to do this? Well, uh, I was a rookie and just won Indy and all that stuff. And uh, I knew with Carroll Shelby, he's from Texas, that he puts a good team together. And Dan Gurney, I knew he was a great race driver and all that on road courses. And I figured, hell, I'll go over as a rookie and see what happens. And fortunate enough, we come out winning. Did he listen to you? Did, was he tough absolutely, to coach? Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, he couldn't have done a better job. Dan, when you think about Phil Remington and... Yeah, oh. I mean, I wasn't telling him how to drive or anything. I, I talked some stories from the past and everything, but A.J. had the talent to do it whether I was there or not. And uh, he was a genuine winner. And that's what his fans have felt all along. And uh, every once in a while, he, uh, he's good at coming up with excuses also. No. Super Tex? No. You've never made an excuse. All right, so you're going down, the, you're practicing at Le Mans for the first time at, at night, and you're going 240 miles an hour down a straightaway on a track you don't know much about. You Did it, was it dawning? Were you a little bit, did you think, man, man, I can handle this or not, or did you take to it right away? Well, the only thing I followed, uh, what did I tell you, what was his name when I went out at night? Oh, I named his name earlier. Uh, Denny Holmes? Yeah, Denny Holmes. I knew he had a lot of experience there, and I followed him about 10 laps, and then he kind of showed me the way, and then I went on after that. But the uh, only thing I didn't like over there, I'm all saying straight, they didn't have no guardrail, nothing, but they painted damn trees about seven foot. And when you was going through there over 200 miles an hour, you kept seeing all them trees, whitewash, so you knew if you went into them, you was in deep trouble. And uh, <laughs> that's the only thing that bothered me at nighttime more than anything. Yeah, tree, trees at 200 miles an hour could be an obstacle. All right, so when you get in the car and you got to go get Phil Remington to help you because you're big, he's big, and we just went and looked at the cockpit, and it's still tiny. Did, driver comfort was basically what? Putting a bubble in the top and a, and a little pad behind you? I, I, uh, I thought the car was very comfortable once we had the bubble. <laughs> uh, so uh, <clears throat> compare, I, I'd been a, in a lot more cramped cars, and... AJ talk about driving a midget. I imagine that was pretty cramped, wasn't it? Yeah. Real cramped. Yeah. Well, here's the other thing. So the race starts. You guys in 24 hours led all but 90 minutes. So were you? Did you think after qualifying and after practice, you were the guys to beat? Did you think we have the car to beat? <coughs> well, Gurney put it on the pole, so that ought to tell you we're going to start first. We might not stay there, but we're going to be there the first lap. But I mean, did you did you kind of think, okay, this is this is definitely my best chance to ever win this race because this car is so good? The uh, long answer is yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's a no. I mean, of course, if you're realistic, you don't know that until the end, right? Right. And uh, we're both pretty realistic. Yeah. Okay. Now, the man that you said makes excuses said one time it was his. It turned to, to take a rest, and he couldn't find you because you were somewhere, and so he had to drive two or three stints in a row in the rain. Is that a fact? Is that an A.J. Foyt fact? I'll take the fifth. Robin is trying to, you're <laughs> no, trying to stir I, it up. I'm not. I think, I think, <laughs> it's, I think it's great that, yeah. that you pulled one over on him. No, no, no. I mean, uh, that, we had an incident there. That's right. And it was, uh, 
AJ had to drive two stints. <laughs> and, uh, uh, but, you know, outside of uh, a few uh, words you can't repeat, why it was fine. <laughs> We didn't have no four or five drivers like they got now, just me and Dan. That made it that much better. What about coming up on cars going, you know, they're going 100 miles an hour slower than you are? Was that the most daunting time of the whole thing? We went by them so damn fast they couldn't even see us. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you, you lead all but 90 minutes of this race. You, you, you win it by four laps, and you never want to think it's in the bag, but, I mean, with an hour or two to go, you guys are thinking... Unless something really drastic happens, we're going to win this thing. I know the Ford people didn't want me in it. They wanted AJ in it for the finish because they felt he had a better chance of uh, lucking out and, and winning it. <laughs> <laughs> they knew I was tired and wore out, so they knew I couldn't run too hard. Did you? Did you? Were you pretty? Were you pretty shagged when it was done? Are you crazy? Of Does course, that's that question. Hell yeah. I'm you sorry. were a young man. You weighed 170 pounds. You were chiseled. I don't care how young I was. I was still tired. Actually, they knew that when they said, you got to get back in. I said, man, Gurney's arms are six inches. I said, my shoulder's hurting so bad I can't stand it. And they said, we can't find him. I said, don't tell me that. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, were you taking get back in? Were you taking a nap, sir? No, sir. I was not. Were you drinking wine? It were you still, uh, I knew what time I had to be back. And, um, and he got lost I carefully uh, was watching on my watch, and uh, I was walking with uh, with Evie. Period. <laughs> Period. End of story. All right. So you win the, your third Indy 500 on May 31st. You guys win Le Mans, I think, June 10th. And June 18th, you win Spa and the Eagle. I'd say in your lifetime, as great as you guys had, as many things as you accomplished, as great as you guys were, that might have been the best month of your lives. It was a good one. Uh, yes, from the racing standpoint, it was. <laughs> See, I did, you couldn't make me say that, could you? <laughs> well, all I can say, probably one of the greatest moments of my life was 1958. My first year I qualified for the Indy 500 coming from quarter miles, and uh, that was a race I always dreamed of, and, and from then on, I just got lucky through my lifetime winning, and after I learned how to win, I loved it, and I wanted to keep winning. But you, when you won Lamar, you said, I won it the first time, that's enough, I'm not going back? Well, I was invited back for two or three years, and I said, I was a rookie, I have nothing to prove. And I really enjoyed it, it was a lot of fun. Uh, being with Ford Motor Company, like they treated us, they treated us like we were something, even though we weren't. Uh, but they put us on a pedestal, like Darren was something, AJ was something. But uh, we just really enjoyed it, and Ford was such a great team to work with. And they wanted to win it as bad as we did. You know, last question. F 50 years later, everybody still talks about it. They bug, hey, we need a picture. Let's talk about this. It's In 100 years, people are still going to be talking about this just because it was Americans, and it was the way you guys won the race, and it was, and it was your careers. Can you prove that that'll happen? <laughs> <laughs> I cannot prove. No, I cannot, Daniel. I cannot prove that. But I think it's going to happen. I wouldn't be a bit surprised. I know uh, if people were half as proud as we were, why, it'll happen. All right. To the great legends of all time, they lie sometimes. Most of the time they tell the truth. Not to me, though. This is, oh, wait. Yes, sir. I, I didn't know you were going to quit already, but uh, <laughs> one of the things I should say about A.J. is uh, not only was he a terrific race driver, who you could tell he enjoyed doing it and was uh, explored different ways of pulling it off and everything, but he was also a doggone good engineer, and uh, he never stressed that, but uh, uh, if there were new things, trends to work, uh, he was probably involved. Now, whether he, well, I just remember that. And uh, if you thought you were going to out uh, engineer him, you probably had another thought coming. You really didn't have a soft spot in your heart for English engineers back in the 80s and 90s, so it was probably pretty good you were an engineer. What are you saying? <laughs> I'm <laughs> saying I knew I wanted to win regardless of how I had to do it. And you're saying that a race car is a race car and you figured it out. A little bit. Every now and then I screwed up. All right. Uh
I was lucky enough to watch these guys race, and uh, they answer my phone calls when I call them. We're going to write this up on racer.com, and Marshall Pruitt's going to take the picture. So thanks for watching. We'll see you down the road, you old timers. Thank you, Robin. Thank you. <laughs>